Jan Michael Vincent He was an American actor Once one of Hollywood's busiest actors spends all his time just trying to stay sober. I don't have to be an alcoholic. I'm out. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi. What happened to you? He was born in Colorado, United States on July 15, 1945. His father's name is Lloyd Vincent, and mother's name is Doris Vincent. His father hailed from a family of career criminals. He became a painter after serving as a B-25 bomber pilot during the World War II. After graduating from Hanford High School in 1963, he enrolled at Ventura College, where he studied for the ensuing three years before dropping out. Like his father, Vincent carried a severe mistrust of authority, and like his father, had to endure the rigid system of the U.S. military when he was enlisted in the California Army National Guard. He was discharged in 1967. <laughs> Jan Michael Vincent's first job as an actor was in the 1967 Mexican-American film The Bandits, in which he worked with Robert Conrad. However, he made his formal screen debut in the telefilm The Hardy Boys, The Mystery of the Chinese Junk. Right through our vacation, and we'll never get this room added on. What are you thinking about, anyway? My best friend! I don't care, honey, I don't like that girl at all. <sighs> In the 1960s, he appeared in a number of TV shows produced by Universal Studios. His performance in the 1970 telefilm Tribes earned him critical acclaim. In 1974, he surprised the audience with full frontal nudity in the crime romance film Buster and Billy. I was just there five weeks. Sending me home. Guess I just didn't have what it takes. Probably join the army. He was cast as the protagonist First Lieutenant Jake Tanner in the 1977 science fiction film Damnation Alley which was based on Roger Zelazny's novel of the same name. I did my final job last night for Eastern Europe. I thought you two were, uh, sparring partners. She's my assistant, period. End of story. 
1981, he starred opposite Kim Basinger in the drama film Hard Country. I'm sorry, but I already ate. Besides, I thought you two were hitting it off pretty nicely. Vincent portrayed Byron Briney Henry in ABC's 1983 miniseries The Winds of War. He shared screen space with Clint Howard in the black comedy horror film Ice Cream Man. Vincent had signed to play Keller in the 1996 action film Red Line when he suffered a vehicular accident. He subsequently portrayed the character with a swollen face and scars and with his hospital ID bracelet still around his wrist. I like it. How close are you from falling off the edge again? Oh, I'm hanging on my... In the final days of his professional career, Vincent appeared in films like Buffalo 66, Escape to Grizzly Mountain, The Thundering Eighth. His last role was Ron Masters in the indie movie White Boy. Jan was driving drunk when he plowed into the back of his girlfriend's car in this intersection. The tabloids had a field day. Jan broke... Between 1984 and 1986, Vincent essayed the role of helicopter pilot Stringfellow Stringhawk in CBS apostrophe action-adventure series Airwolf. I couldn't smell it on his breath, but uh, he acted like he was high. Clowning around, taking a lot of chances. His coordination was way off. Jan Michael Vincent had been married three times in his life. His first wife was Bonnie Poorman to whom he was married from 1968 to 1977. They had a daughter together. Any physical uh, differences? Yeah, his coordination's worse all the time. I don't know if drinking is his problem, but uh, he's on something. Would you let me know if you like? His second wife was Joanne Robinson. Married on August 30, 1986, the couple was together until 1998, when Robinson accused him of abusing her and got a restraining order against him. They divorced in the following year. He exchanged wedding vows with his third and final wife, Patricia and Chris, in June 2000. They were married until his death. For the most part of his life, Vincent dealt with alcoholism and intravenous substance abuse. He was apprehended three times, in 1977, 1978, and 1979, for possession of cocaine, and was jailed twice more for bar brawls, in 1984 and 1985. In the 1990s, he got into three terrible automobile collisions, barely surviving each time. In 2000, he was sentenced to 60 days in jail for a probation violation. He died on February 10, 2019, due to cardiac arrest.